Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we've got a quick little networking video to do because I've been having some trouble that's been going on for a while with my production computer here. As you know, we hooked up this fancy internet connection here, which has just been upgraded and we'll have a video about that upgrade coming soon. But I essentially have now six gigabits of symmetrical bandwidth up and down. And when you have that much coming in, you need a way to work with that level of bandwidth inside your home in addition to being outside because most consumer networking gear runs at one gigabit and we've got six that we can access to the world. So uh, when I put in that connection, I upgraded all of my networking equipment, but I did not upgrade my wiring. So when I redid my basement for my studio, I put in Cat5e, a decision that I now regret. It was a lot cheaper back then when I did it, but now I have networking cable that's not rated for the 10 gig connections that I need to set up to make full use of the bandwidth that I have. And my production computer has been the most problematic running 10 gig over Cat5, and oddly it has the shortest run. Uh, but these are the kinds of pitfalls you run into when you run faster than the specs the cable can support. So what I'm gonna be doing, and I'm not gonna be able to do this live because I'm recording on the computer that uh, will be upgraded, is I'm going to hook up a fiber patch cable and a fiber setup for my production computer. So we're going to plug into my switch with an optical fiber optic cable versus a coax Cat5e, and that will solve my problem. So what I purchased here, uh, was a 10 GTEC optical patch cord. This will run at 10 gigabits. It's an LC to LC. I got a 20 meter cord, which is a little longer than what I needed, but the other size that they had was shorter than what I needed. So we'll have a little bit of extra length, but the uh, modules here that I'm using, I think will go up to 300 meters. So I should have uh, plenty of good performance with this. And what I'm gonna do is run this up a column and then through the ceiling and then back down into my equipment closet is how I'm going to hook this up. So that is the cabling part. And you can see these are pre-terminated. Fiber cables are very hard to terminate on your own. So a lot of folks that I know that run fiber throughout their homes tend to buy the cables pre-terminated and then just run them from one location to the other. I think you can get wall mounts or wall sockets and whatnot to do all that. So it's something you can do. Um, these are the modules. Now, the way these work, of course, is by sliding them in uh, to your network switch. And this is an SFP, a pair of SFP Plus modules. By the way, I purchased all this stuff with my own funds. And so what you do is you take your module here, and I have a little demo uh, switch here that we can plug this into real quick. And what you do is just slide the module into an SFP Plus port and then you connect the fiber to the end of the port and connect both ends together. That's how you do it. And what's neat is that there are different types of modules depending on the connection type that you have. So this module, uh, which came, uh, is a Cable Matters uh, module here, supports 10 gigabits per second, and it's an SFP Plus to LC module, which is the type of multi-mode fiber optic cable and connector uh, that I have purchased. But there's a whole bunch of different types of fiber options available. So you need to make sure that you get the right module for the type of cable that you're running. Additionally, they sell RJ45 adapters like this, so you can get a 10 gig copper connection. And then in my equipment room over there, and I did a video on this earlier, I have what's called direct attached copper, which are modules connected together by a cable. And for a very short run, they work really well for patching one switch to the other. Um, so we're gonna have one of these plugged into our switch and the other end is going to plug into this network card that I bought. This is a 10 g Tech X520 10G1S-X8. Uh, what attracted me to it was its price, first of all, but also because it is running with an Intel chip inside, and that's something that my current NIC does not have. I love the <laughs> driver CD here. I might download a more recent version. Uh, and this is the card itself. Nothing crazy, it's just a PCI Express card here. But you'll notice that it also has an SFP Plus connector on here, so you can pick uh, your modules to go with it. And this will give me flexibility in the future. If I ever wanted to change how I'm connecting, I can just slide out the module and plug in another one to match whatever connectivity that I am going with. So that is what I am going to be doing this weekend, 
getting this network situation figured out because what happens when my system here goes down uh, or locks up or whatever is that it also locks up my entire network and it seems to only do it when it is sending out a large volume of data like when I'm doing NDI video or doing a speed test or something like that. Typically, if I'm streaming out to my streaming providers, which is far below 10 megabits, it's fine. But when we start getting into the gigabit range is when it can fail. And I want to get that uh, dealt with pretty soon because I was on a, a consulting job where it locked up in the middle of it. And that is not a time you want something to lock up. All right, so we've got the network card installed, the fiber connected, and let's run a speed test now out to the Comcast server and see how we do. And it looks like we're getting every electron or just about out of this speed increase that I recently got on my Gigabit Pro connection. I'm gonna talk more about this on my weekly wrap up video. But it looks as though this uh, new setup here is working quite well and hopefully my production machine is going to be a lot more reliable for multi-gigabit communications rolling forward. And that will do it for this unboxing of my latest networking project. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.